Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. And here you can also like. And please ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things such as artworks. That would be greatly appreciated. And please change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics of these videos. And in this video, we're going to talk about glucagon, a peptide hormone. And its main role is in, is in keeping the homeostatic conditions of metabolism. And its, and its effects are opposite to that of insulin. Now, within the pancreas, we have these alpha cells. And it's these alpha cells which create glucagon. And as I mentioned, glucagon has opposite effects of insulin. Where insulin wants to promote uh, the storage of excess energy, glucagon wants to promote the breakdown of certain things in our body to provide energy for the body. So it essentially signals the fasted state. Because, for example, within the fast, fasted state, you have low blood glucose level, as in hypoglycemia. And then glucagon will be secreted, which will cause the liver to um, give glucose to the blood, to uh, regulate the blood glucose levels. And now I will show you um, the effects glucagon ha have, has on various uh, organs within the body when we are in a fasted state. So here we have the bloodstream, and it has... Uh, hypoglycemia, uh, very low blood glucose. And here we have the liver and adipose tissue and also skeletal muscle. Okay, so we're in a fasted state with low blood glucose levels, as in hypoglycemia. This will cause the alpha cells to secrete glucagon. What's important to know is that glucagon has no effect on skeletal muscle because there are no glucagon receptors in skeletal muscle. Glucagon does have an effect on adipose tissue though, and it stimulates the breakdown or degradation of triacylglycerols into glycerol and fatty acids. These fatty acids and glycerol will then travel to the liver. Glucagon will promote the conversion of fatty acids to ketone bodies, so that ketone bodies can be used as a source of fuel during the fasted state. For the brain and skeletal muscle, for example. Glucagon will also promote gluconeogenesis to make more glucose. Because now the liver has glycerol, glycerol can go uh, through gluconeogenesis to be converted to glucose 6-phosphate. Glycogen, glucagon, sorry, also promotes the breakdown of glycogen uh, via gluconeogenesis as well to make glucose 6-phosphate. And glucose 6-phosphate can then be converted to glucose. And then this is when the liver secretes glucose in the bloodstream to regulate the blood glucose levels, to increase glucose, uh, blood glucose levels. Uh, the proteins in the liver can um, go via proteolysis to uh, make amino acids, and these amino acids can then be fed into gluconeogenesis to make uh, glucose 6-phosphate and then glucose. And this is also promoted by glucagon. And it's important to note that the muscles can also provide amino acids into the liver uh, during a fasted state, but this is not caused by the effects of glucagon, because remember, glucagon has no effect on skeletal muscle. And so that was an overview of the six effects glucagon has on various organs and, and how it causes it to degradate uh, many things to provide energy uh, to the blood, as in glucose. Now let's look at how glucagon is synthesized. Now glucagon synthesis is very similar to the insulin because they're both peptide hormones. So here we have um, the pancreas. And glucagon synthesis occurs in the alpha cells of the pancreas because it's these alpha cells which essentially secretes glucagon. And within these alpha cells, we have this ribosome, which is translating an mRNA, mRNA for glucagon. Okay, and so this protein, polypeptide, is preproglucagon. Preproglucagon, which has just been translated, will then travel to the endoplasmic reticulum to get cleaved up and sorted out to make proglucagon. The proglucagon is then cleaved up into three different peptides by a particular enzyme. And now the three peptides formed, polypeptides formed, is a 29 amino acid glucagon, the actual hormone we're looking at. It, it also creates a small polypeptide uh, known as GRPP, glycentin related pancreatic peptide, and also another long one called the major uh, proglucagon fragment. But we're not looking at these other ones, we're concentrating on the 29 amino acid glucagon. Anyways, once glucagon is formed, glucagon can then be secreted by the alpha cells and by the pancreas essentially into the bloodstream. Glucagon will then travel through the bloodstream to its target tissue. It can be adipose tissue or it can be even the liver. Now let's trail off there for a bit and look at the intestines. 
So remember, the pancreas has a pancreatic duct where it can secrete its digestive enzymes into the intestines, into the duodenum, to help in the digestive process after we eat. Well, anyway, in the duodenum, we have the intestinal cells. And what's very interesting is that the intestinal cells also has a gene that makes, that, tra that transcribes for glucagon. It has very similar genes to the one found in the, in the alpha cells. So essentially, if we follow this route, we can say that this um, gene will make uh, mRNA, which, which is for glucagon, very exactly the same. And then the ribosome will translate it to uh, a pre-proglucagon. So the pre-proglucagon will then travel to the endoplasmic reticulum to form proglucagon, exactly the same as the alpha cells. Except now, the proglucagon is cleaved up by a different mechanism and by different things to form three different polypeptides. And these polypeptides is the 2069 amino acid glycentin, and then we have the glucagon-like peptide 1 and glucagon-like peptide 2. Now, glycentin can, the, can, can then be also cleaved up into two other peptides. The GRPP, uh, glycentin-related related pancreatic peptide, exactly the same as the one from the alpha cells, and also another one called oxalotonomodulin. Hope I pronounced that right. And anyway, this oxalotonomodulin, interestingly enough, has a role, potential role, in suppressing appetite. Something interesting to note. Anyway, now that we know how glucagon is synthesized from the alpha cells, we can see how it affects the target tissue, such as the liver here. So the liver has a receptor which glucagon can bind to and initiates its effects in degradation of stuff to be released into the bloodstream, for example. So what receptor does glucagon actually bind to to initiate its intracellular effects? Well, if we zoom into the liver here, we can see the liver has a membrane, and it has a special receptor known as a G-protein coupled receptor with a G-protein in the intracellular fluid. And then we have the effector protein adenylate cyclase over here, which is an enzyme. And here is the outside of the cell and here is the inside of the cell. And now if you don't know what a G-protein coupled receptor is, you can watch a, a video, on the, my video, on the G-protein coupled receptor, uh, which is in the pharmacology playlist, I'm pretty sure. Now, within the cell, we also have a special enzyme known as protein kinase A, PKA. But protein kinase A is inactive because it's bound and anchored by a protein known as the A kinase anchoring protein. And so this PKA, two PKAs are, ba are bound to the regulatory subunits of this AKAP, and which makes it inactive, you can say. So how do we activate this protein kinase A? Well, glucagon can bind onto the G protein coupled receptor, which will create a conformational change, which will cause the intracellular G protein to move and activate the adenylate cyclase. The activated adenylate cyclase can then convert ATP to cyclic AMP. And per glucagon stimulation, cyc adenylate cyclase can make about times 20 cyclic AMPs, let's just say. And interestingly enough, cyclic AMP can activate protein kinase A. How does it do this? Well, two cyclic AMPs can bind onto the regulatory subunit of AKAP, the A kinase anchoring protein, which will then cause the protein kinase A to disassociate and become activated. And as you can see by this diagram, there is four cyclic AMPs, which binds to two regulatory subunits, which activates two protein kinase A. Therefore, if we have 20 cyclic AMPs, this would mean that it will activate 10 PKAs. So 10 protein kinase A's are now activated. And protein, protein kinase A, uh, when it becomes activated, can then cause the intracellular effects of glucagon. Because this is the liver, PKA will cause an increase in glycogen degradation. It will cause a decrease in glycogen synthesis. It will cause a decrease in glycolysis. And it will cause an increase in gluconeogenesis, because we want more glucose, remember. Of course, glucagon has many other effects on different types of organs, such as adipose tissue, and it promotes lipolysis, for example. So now let's look at uh, more deeper into the effects glucagon has have on various processes in promoting the breakdown of macromolecules. And sorry for the incorrect spelling, it's meant to be uh, glucagon, not glycogen. So glucagon promotes 
the degradation of glycogen into glucose by stimulating the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase. Glucagon does inhibits the synthesis of glycogen from glucose and so it inhibits the enzyme glycogen synthase. Glucagon also inhibits uh, glycolysis, the conversion of glucose to pyruvate, and so inhibits the enzyme protein phosphofructokinase 1, um, one of the many proteins associated with this process. Glucagon also stimulates gluconeogenesis by stimulating the conversion of acetyl-CoA, pyruvate, and even oxaloacetate into glucose. And this is through the enzyme, particularly glucose 6-phosphatase. Glucagon also stimulates the degradation of triacylglycerols to glycerol and fatty acid, and so stimulates the enzyme hormone-sensitive lipase. Glucagon stimulates the conversion uh, of fatty acids to acetyl-CoA, and then glucagon, as I mentioned, stimulates gluconeogenesis, uh, which stimulates the conversion of glycerol and acetyl-CoA to glucose. And importantly, actually, glucagon also stimulates the synthesis of ketone bodies to provide energy to different organs during the fasted state. And that concludes the video on glucagon. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and share. Thank you.